All right, we're going to have to indicate things here a little bit. can set the B0 here, or the rotational 0. Now what I find easiest to do when you're indicating something like this on a rotary axis is to kind of start in the middle, which in this case is around x0 on on this machine but and go out zero your indicator and then go out from the side and bring that indicator back to um, the zero point that you started at and that gets you kind of close right to begin with if you start on one side, like if I started here and I zeroed it and I went to the other side, I would, uh, I would have to be kind of going back and forth more. Now I'm going to split the difference here and I'm going to bring it back to zero. It should be fairly close. This is just a, a rough forging and this and this particular face is just it looks like it's bandsawed or something here I'm gonna go up and down a little bit go across the bottom here and see where I'm at just get a feeling for how much deviation I have in this saw cut not too much It's about 10 or 15 thousandths. Pretty straight saw cut, actually. So we're going to, um, for the purpose of this, we're going to use that as our B0 in this case. So it's close enough. There's, there's roughly about a half an inch or 5 eighths of an inch of material on the thickness of this block that we got to take off. So we're going to take a, roughly a quarter of an inch or thereabouts. Five, five sixteenths to a quarter of an inch off each face. So, so right now we got our B zero set uh, aligned, and we got to set the zero on the offset. Here's the um, display of the control. We're going to go to the work offset. We're going to use G fifty four. So we're going to set this B zero to this number over here. So I'm just going to enter forty four down here and enter in 89.670 up here. Well, first I gotta put it in the absolute on this. Now we're gonna go back to 44 and 89.670. This B, we wanna enter that over here. And I'm going to enter it also in on a 54 G55's B0. So we're going to run down to 54 and 89.670. Because we're using these two offsets to machine to face this block. We're using this for the front side and this for the back side. That now I'm going to have to get the spindle probe out and I'm going to measure the the um, center and the the Y center and the well I gotta check the program where my uh, actual Y center or zero is and then the um, Z I'll set it on the on the top of this uh, sod cut and then move it in I think we're gonna go in five sixteenths more or less because I think there's about five eighths of an inch uh, of extra stock total divided by two on each face and um, set it there. Now my program only allows for like a quarter of an inch on each face, so the, the first cuts are gonna be a little bit heavy, but I think it'll be all right. 
And here are the Renishaw cycles that we're, we're going to use for the probing. Now I went and measured the, the part and um, well first of all this G65 is calling a macro and the macro, the Renishaw Easy Set macro which is what we're using here for the probing, the manual probing cycles if you will. It's 9023 and the um, S1 is for fixture offset one or G54. But we want to do a different cycle here. We're going to do A4 point, which is an outside web, and the X direction was uh, 29.380 in, in distance, and we're going to go Z minus 0.75 deep. So this is going to move out from the center half of the 29.380 starts in the X minus direction and it goes over and probes the side of the part and then it goes over to the other side probes it and it's going to move down from where the probe is setting three quarters of an inch when you start okay now the height of the part the the Y zero is in the center of the block so we're going to set this at a four point as well and we're going to go the height was four so it's Y 14.380, I believe is what it, I measured it. And we're going to also go down Z minus 0.75, end of block. And the final cycle is uh, probing straight down in Z, which is an A9 point on the Renishaw cycle. So I hit input. So when I change, after I change to the probe, I'm going to start it on this cycle, but first I got to change to the probe. So on this machine, we look back here on the um, monitor, the top monitor screen. We, we can type in a T80 here. 80 is the probe, uh, uh, the spindle probe on this machine, tool 80. And then we're going to go back to the edit or the MDI screen. I'm going to say input here so it says MDI complete here. And so I put it, make sure it's in the MDI mode and then I just got to push cycle start here and it'll go up and change to the spindle probe. Should be able to see that happening right here. I'm going to take a tape measure and kind of with a sharpie mark the where I want to start this probing cycle in the center of this block. It gives me a, it's kind of hard to just visually estimate where the center of a larger piece like this is when you got the probe down there. So 29 and 3 eighths is going to be uh, 29. I'm putting a manual jog and I'm going to jog the probe so that it's more or less there. So we can start the probing cycles. Now I want to jog this, leave it up above the part of course so it doesn't hit it, but I need to jog it down far enough so that when it goes down three quarters of an inch, it's going to um, contact the part, you know, when it goes out to the side. And the controller, I want to run the cursor down to this first line in the probing cycles we're going to use. Now I've, I've put a um, MOO between each one so I can 
do something. In this case, I don't need to, but a lot of times I have different cycles here. I want to jog it, the machine to different locations so I have an MOO so it stops. I can put it in a handle jog and jog it to the new spot I want to probe and then, uh, and then let it run, put it back into auto mode and let it run. So this is the one we want to start with. So we've got to push input and over here it says MDI complete and it's, it brought that line to the top of the screen so it's ready to run that cycle and all we got to do now is put the machine into MDI and uh, down here I, I always slow the rapid down before I do this and then I just got to push cycle start and start it here we go X direction Now the default clearance is about 10 millimeters, I think, outside the um, dimension you put in your, uh, your uh, cycle. You can change that if you want and, and increase that if you need to. In this case, it's enough for what we're doing. Okay, that sets the X zero on G54. Now why? We're going to go down. It's going to go down first. Got to be a little watchful of this because this can hit the pallet down here when the probe's down if it's going in too far. But I'm, I'm looking at it and I can see there's, looks like there's plenty of clearance. This is why I put this on the 246 blocks because of, you can see how the interference of the, under the spindle when it's actually facing the part with the face mill. Okay, so that's setting the Y zero. And now it's straight in for the Z. back at the control and first of all this is the front side and so when it rotates 180 degrees it's going to be the opposite of that so I'm going to just manually set this G55's X at at a minus minus 0 0.0639 for this purpose everything that's going to be close enough so we're going to enter a 51 down here and we're going to go minus 0.0 Six three nine on that one, and this Y is going to be the same, so that's going to be minus twenty five point three 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 zero nine. I don't know if you can hear me. There's a guy blowing an air hose right here, and it's kind of loud. Now we already set the B's the same. The B zeros are the same for these two offsets because in the program it's rotating 180 degrees on the B so we don't have to set this one 100, 180 degrees different. That's the way the program's working. So now I'm going to put this in the incremental mode on an I enter down here so this should shift over to incremental and now I'm going to set this we probe this offset for Z we're not worried about this one just at the moment we're going to calculate that so we probe this one at minus 36.0677 and we're going to go, I'm going to go down, um, I'm going to go down minus 0.310. Let me check that one more time. It's always good to check twice. Yeah, it's about five-eighths of an inch of material total, so we're going to go 310 thousandths down in Z here. So we can push input. And this should go minus 310 more. Now, up here, I don't know if you can mm, might not be able to read that right here, but I've got a number entered there, which I know is the... Um, distance from my home position if you will or zero return position of the machine 
to the center of rotation of the B-axis, which is minus 43.334 on this machine. So if I take and double that for the diameter, because I'm dealing with both sides of the part here, so it's kind of like a diameter on a lathe, if you will, and I say 43.334 times 2, and if I subtract this offset from that, so we, we go minus 36.377, no, excuse me, point three seven seven seven. okay, and we're left with 50 inches, 50.29 inches, and we got to subtract the width of the part, which is 14 inches in this case. So this offset here on uh, G53, and we're going to go down to 50, um, entry number 53, Let me get this ca camera back a little bit so you can see it, okay, and we're going to enter this number in this offset right here, so 53 down here, we're going to go minus, because it's going to be in the minus direction, 36 point. Two nine oh three. All right, now we're going to double check this all. Let me get back a little bit so maybe I can show you the calculator if you can see it. You really can't see it too good, but we're going to take the um, 43.334, the distance from zero return to um, the center of rotation. So it's a 43.334 times 2. So that's the total from both sides, or the diameter, if you will. And they're going to say minus 14 inches for the part, the width of the part. So we're left with 72.668. And we're going to subtract this offset, minus 36.2903. And we should be left with that number there, which is minus 36.3777. So everything is correct. You just kind of double check that because we're making manual entries here. Want to make sure we didn't make a mistake. So now we're ready to start the, the program and machine these two faces of this part. And it should come out to 14 inches when it's done with intolerance, plus or minus five, I think, in this case. We're ready to run the program. But first, we got to um, call up the program. I loaded it in the machine. So here's our program, the beginning of it, um, through the serial port, because that's the only way to get programs in this machine is, is to use the serial port from the computer. And now we're uh, ready to push cycle start. Now here you're going to push, I'm going to push feed hold and then I'm going to look at the distance to go display. Here, see the distance to go in the, it's moving in the z-axis right now is 3.079 inches and it's going to one inch in the program. So you come out over here and you look at the, you look at this thing and you say can it go three inches and not hit anything? looks like it can all right so we're gonna we've got the machine already in single block we're gonna let it go down there then we're gonna grab something I usually use a like a one two three block let's see if I can find one here here's one because that's why I program to go to one inch in Z now remember when we set this offset we set it in five sixteenths of an inch so that looks pretty much right so 
it looks like it's good and we can run the program. It's kind of important to do that on the first cycle of a program just to make sure you're not setting something wrong like the, the this offset was already set on this tool so I know it's correct but if I had a fixture offset or something set too far in or even too far out I could see it real obviously here but you can see that looks like about five sixteenths of an inch from where that block is setting so we're in the correct position. So it, it is, so we can go ahead and continue to run the other side here. How he did. So I'm going to M, uh, M11. I'm going to unclamp the B axis. 
move this out here closer. Okay, we're gonna get in here and mic the, the thickness of this, but uh, let me see how I can do this and somehow get the mic in the picture. Undersides there. It's hard for me to do it down here. It's a little bit smaller down at the bottom. Maybe like a. I don't know, maybe not. Anyway, well within the tolerance, less than my supply. It's about the same at the bottom. Maybe I was twisting it too hard before. Okay, let's turn it around. Let's see what we got on this side. Should be the same, pretty much. This machine usually machines very straight. Just a hair smaller at the bottom there. That's the um, facing of the one side, the two sides, and the next up, the next thing is the same. I got to do this to the other part, but then I just got to flip it on this machine face, one of the machine faces, and do exactly the same thing to those two. And then we do the ends, and the ends have a little bit more elaborate program because there's a a few holes in the part after that on the three faces, if you will which would be this end, that end, and, and one of these faces here. So, this is all I can really show you on this part. This customer gets a little bit picky too on this. I thought maybe just showing you facing, you know, a piece of a, a little bit of it. But my main reason for um, doing this was I, I was showed you how to manually probe the part and on the ends, the program on the end work I have an automatic probing cycle and you can set all those dimensions that I set in the offsets automatically. There's a way to do that with the um, machine variables and the and, uh, and user variables, machine variables and calculations in the program to do that all automatically. And if you uh, configure it such, all you gotta do is get the part within maybe an inch or so of the right location on the pallet and then, uh, and then run the program and the probe, the spindle probe will establish the B rotation and then the location of the part and all the fixture offsets which there's three of them being used on the final operation that does the ends and the holes in the part um, unfortunately I really can't show um, I did show something about these on a, on a video earlier and the customer kind of got weird about it so I can't really show that but I, I do want to explain I don't know if it's too much detail in this video to explain it about the, doing it automatically. I'd like to do that, but I'm thinking I might tire you guys out. The video's already getting a little bit long. Maybe I'll make a separate video 
of that and the people that want to watch that can watch that other than that this is um pretty much it for this video and thanks for watching